Hey guys, I'm Tucker from Electric Cycler Rider and this is the Segway X260. Now if this bike looks familiar to you, you're not mistaken. It's largely based off of the Suron X platform. And the reason for that is that Segway is the largest shareholder in the Suron company. So what you get as a result is the Segway X260. Now at first glance, this bike looks very similar to the Suron X, but there are some styling differences and I'll start there. Now this bike is sporting the DNM Volcano front fork. Uh, not necessarily unique to this bike. I know that some Surons come with it, but it depends on what model and when you got your Suron will determine which fork came on that bike. This one is sporting the DNM Volcano front fork, as well as the DNM rear shock, which is the same shock that you get on the Suron. The only difference is this coil is just a different color than the black that comes on most Surons. So uh, just a color difference there, essentially the same fork and shock though. Now another thing that this bike gets is the electronic ride-by-wire throttle. I know that the Surons are starting to come out with those now, but this bike also has one, so you get that quick responsive electronic ride-by-wire throttle on this bike. The battery has some styling differences. The other thing that's different is the LCD display on this battery has an actual battery icon with bars in it that show you battery life. As the battery life starts to diminish, you'll see a battery percentage on there as well. And it's a bit easier to read than the older model, so that's a pretty cool upgrade there. Now the biggest difference between this Segway X260 and the Suron X lies within the Segway app. Segway has developed an app that you can connect to this bike via Bluetooth. And when you go into speed modes within that app, it allows you to customize the way that the power is delivered on this bike. So when you go into speed modes, you'll see twisting force and limited. Now twisting force represents the way that the bike reacts to your throttle input. So if you want it to be quick and snappy and immediate, you can turn that all the way up or you can tone it down if you don't want it to hit as hard when you twist the throttle. And then if you go down to limited, limited is the amount of power that the bike receives. So you can fine tune in sport mode how much power you want the bike to receive and how the bike is going to receive it. Now I'm trying to get the most out of this bike, so I've got those both turned all the way up, but I think that's a really beneficial option for folks that are not wanting to maximize the power on it because on the Suron, you basically have to snip a wire underneath the battery box here and that will unleash the full power of this bike. Having the option to customize that within the app in sport mode really allows the rider to have their own experience and get what they want to get out of this bike. Another really cool feature within the app is the energy recovery level. And basically what that is, is the regenerative braking that this bike provides. So you can actually turn that all the way up or you can turn it all the way off and have the bike have more of a freewheel type feel. And I think that that's super important because I actually took my Suron to the summit of Pikes Peak, which is a 14,000 foot mountain out here in Colorado. And I coasted the bike about 13 miles down that mountain to see what type of battery life I could regenerate back into the battery. And I didn't post that video because the, the numbers were pretty underwhelming. It was about 2% battery that I regenerated from the summit of Pikes Peak down to the bottom. And it really made me think if the regen is really worth it. So to be able to shut that off and have more of a freewheel feel on this bike, you might actually be able to carry more momentum and not have to be on the throttle as fast. And that might actually prolong the battery life as opposed to regenerating power back into the battery. So it's definitely something worth testing, but it's even more importantly, something worth noting on this bike. You can't change the regen levels on the Suron, at least in an easy way. On this bike, you can fine tune it however way you want. And I think those customizable features within that app really separate this Segway X260 from the current Suron X. Now, if you've watched my videos in the past, you know I recommend a few things right off the bat, and I've already done those to this bike, just to ensure that I'm not gonna get a flat out there when I'm testing it today, it's got Michelin heavy duty tubes as well as a Dunlop front tire and a Shinko Trials rear tire. I've got the Pro Taper three inch rise handlebars on here to open up the ergonomics a little bit and just paired it with my XC Gear Hammerhead 360 stem. So those are the only modifications to the bike. The reason I'm doing those is I got a flat the first time I was testing the Suron X and I don't wanna do that again today. So to ensure that I put the heavy duty tubes in here as well as just want to open the ergonomics up of the bike. It makes me ride the bike a lot better 
and it's something that I would immediately do to this bike regardless. So that's what has been done to this bike. The rest of it is absolutely stock. Now I'm gonna gear up and we'll take this thing for a ride. brakes are the same as the Suron and that probably the next thing I'm going to be doing to this bike is replacing at least the brake pads to the Shimano's it's amazing what a difference just the upgrade in brake pads will do these brakes really aren't bad it's just the pads are not very good. Whew. Deflecting a little bit. Yeah, this DNM fork is probably great for most applications, but if you're riding some of this single track that's rough. Oh, like this stuff. Man. Feeling a lot of flex, a lot of deflection. It'll take it, but I'm used to the uh, RockShox Boxer that came on my Suron. Power-wise, it does feel really similar to the Suron. Can't quite tell a power difference, so that's a good thing. Feels like a Suron X with more freewheel. Not having that region makes the bike feel a lot different. The bike's just not slowing itself down at all, which is kind of a cool feeling. Feels even more like you're riding a mountain bike. Yeah, it's a different experience for sure. Like I said in the beginning, it's cool that you can change the regen on it. I see it being really beneficial in certain applications. So, the bike looks a lot like a Suron. And it rides a lot like a Suron. The key differences that I can tell is obviously the electronic ride by wire. Throttle feels a lot different. For lack of a more sophisticated term, it feels electric. The fork and shock could use some attention. Same can be said for the Suron. Now, I do need to point out that I'm riding this bike in some unique terrain and not exactly what everybody's going to be riding so what i think needs to be changed might be different for some of you that are watching this but overall i think it's a really enjoyable ride i think especially on these bikes if you're a mountain biker that's trying to get into riding moto And I think this is a really good bike for you. It's light and nimble. It's forgiving. And it rides a lot lighter than a free ride even 
or obviously any internal combustion bike. So for those that are looking to get into the sport, those that are trying to transition from a mountain bike to a moto, and then obviously just folks that want to open up more riding possibilities due to the quiet nature of this bike. I think this bike's a really good fit for those types of people. Now a lot of people ask me what what's the best most affordable electric dirt bike that they can buy. And So far, bang for your buck, these Segways and Surons are pretty hard to beat. It's a low cost of entry, and yes, there are some components if you're riding it hard that you're going to want to change out. But that's how it's able to come in at such a low MSRP and for the average rider all the components are fine and you'll be happy with the bike. If you're a moto rider or you're a really aggressive mountain biker and you want to get the most out of this bike then yeah you'll need to upgrade some things. But pound for pound, bang for your buck, This bike's pretty hard to beat. There's a lot you can do to make this bike feel a lot more burly and stout. But as a base platform and for the price, it's a really cool option. All right, just finishing up my ride on the Segway X260, and I think it's a great bike. It is very reminiscent of a Suron X. Uh, the bike feels very similar, as you would expect. The only big difference would be the regenerative braking that I basically turned off completely. Um, it gives the bike a very free wheel kind of feel to it. And um, yeah, I like that. I'll do a bit more testing with it, but it was a, a cool thing to try out and something different from the Suron X. I rode it today uh, down to 15% battery. So I rode it from 100% down to 15% and I went 16.8 miles on that ride. So that's what you can expect, full power mode, uh, no regenerative braking and riding the, that type of terrain that I was just on at that pace. Uh, my weight, I'm about 155, 160 with gear. Uh, so that's about the, the type of range that you can expect on this bike with those settings. Um, I'm personally interested in upgrading these forks. I would not recommend them for somebody that's riding, uh, I guess the type of terrain or, or style that I'm riding, but I think it's a very good fork if you're just kind of using it for a general purpose bike. If you're pushing it kind of hard and you really want that extra comfort and uh, traction and less deflection, then um, upgrading the forks probably a good idea, but this one will absolutely do. Uh, not saying that you need to go out and do that. I think the perfect candidates for these bikes are maybe somebody that uh, just wants to be really silent on the trails or in their, their track, wherever they're riding, um, just keep things quiet. I think uh, folks that are maybe uh, mountain bikers that want to try something that's a little bit more like moto, but maybe not a full uh, dirt bike. I think that this is a, a really good way to get into it, especially with the Segway. If you are able to tune the performance of the controller uh, to best suit the rider, I think that that is a really uh, cool benefit for those that are trying to work their way up and trying to get on these bikes. But overall, my first impressions are positive. I think it's a great bike for the money and the added features on the app and controller are super cool. So. I'll be doing some more videos on this bike, but in the meantime, thanks for watching.